This one habit changed the entire way that I think about music. And here's the thing, it's so simple. You've just written the best melody of your life, but here's the problem. It's only eight measures long. And no matter what you do, no matter how many times you play it back, you can't figure out where to go from here. I faced the exact same wall over and over again until a professor of mine told me to create this one habit. And honestly, it applies to all musicians, composers, performers, conductors, theorists, all the above, doesn't matter. I've got this bad tendency to hyper-focus on just a couple of measures, and the thing is, that strategy will always leave you stuck. Let me show you what I'm working on. The problem is, is that you're zoomed in too far, and when you focus on just a couple of measures without having the entire picture, it's like we're gonna go on a road trip and we don't know where or when. All I've got down is world's largest rocking chair in Casey, Illinois. I've got down everything that there is to know about this destination. I've got the entire day planned out for us, but I don't know anything else about the rest of the trip. It obviously makes way more sense for us to pick our start and end points before we start worrying about the specifics of a pit stop. If we end up deciding that our road trip is from Raleigh, North Carolina to Houston, Texas, then obviously my rocking chair idea doesn't make any sense. I now know that's for another trip. It would make way more sense for us to stop in Anniston, Alabama and see the world's largest office chair instead. But before my point gets entirely lost on the side of Interstate 20, we need a 30,000 foot view of the entire piece before we start worrying about the specifics of a particular section, or else we might have a really well-polished passage that doesn't even fit in with the rest of the piece. It's pretty common to get stuck at some point in the writing process. You hit a wall at a certain point and you don't know where to go from there. And that's why I had to write out my entire composition process to help me get over these walls. And I don't want that to happen to you. And so I've made this interactive PDF that outlines the entire composition and songwriting process. It's a step-by-step -step guide that takes you all the way from ideation to final score and it's interactive. And so it's got 16 different links to additional resources to help you on your journey. I think you'll find them quite useful. This PDF is free when you join my email list, and so all you have to do is click on the link in the description below. And so you might be asking, how do we get this 30,000 foot view of the entire piece? Well, one such way is with this. This right here is a short score. Well, half of one. I haven't finished it yet. It's aptly named because this score is shorter than the full score. After I've gathered and written most of the primary material for the piece, the short score provides a physical space for me to lay out those materials from start to finish. Maybe I just have a melody. Maybe I just have a rhythm or just some nebulous gesture. I can put those down in physical space and I know where they go. This gives me a broad overview of how the piece will flow and it also shows me what gaps still need to be filled in. And then after I have all of this completed, then I can start moving into specific sketches for certain sections. When my composition professor originally pitched me this idea, he actually packaged it as get to the double bar. And if you're unfamiliar, the double bar is also aptly named because instead of just one bar, like there is every measure, there's two, and it tells you that the piece is over. The idea of getting to the double bar suggests that you're trying to get to that 30,000 foot view as quick as possible. To put it another way, it's very difficult to edit an idea that's in your head. Getting it all out on paper, however quick, however rough, it's better because then you have something to work with, you have that overview. This advice is not just for composers, but for all musicians. For composers, it can provide a way to get unstuck, like we've been talking about. It gives you that overview so that you can now start working in detail. For conductors and performers, it's about having a picture of the entire piece. The, the tendency would be to just hone in on a couple of problem spots instead of getting the entire picture. Just work through the piece from start to finish and get a complete overview before you start working on problem sections. And for music theorists, you really need to have the context of the entire piece before you can accurately analyze any one particular section. As with so many things in life, whether it be half-written pieces of music or ill-advised road trips, context is everything. So if you're stuck on a piece that you're writing or you're learning, take a step back, get a 30,000 foot overview first. So that's what I would do if I was stuck when writing a song. But if you wanna know the best way to start a song, we're talking about that right over 